All right, welcome back to Good Morning Vale. I've got Dan Smith with Vale Mountain Rescue, taking time out of your potentially busy potentially. day, right? Lately, it's been very potential. Welcome to the show. Good Always glad to be here. I mean, honestly, your phone could ring right now, and you can, oh, yeah. guys could be and, on. And you'll get all way. mad at me because it'll buzz. <laughs> no, <laughs> what, hopefully what? this hour of the morning we don't get many. So this is that time of the year, Dan. We've talked about it before. I know that um, a lot of people in the backcountry, a lot of people hunting. Oh, yeah. Hunting's a big thing right now. Like you said, off camera, it brings a lot. Of money of to the economy, yeah. and we, you know, we get a lot of uh, people in the backcountry that uh, we like guided hunters. They they tend to get in fewer problems than hunters that are just taken out, dropped, and and come back or are hunting by themselves. Uh, hunters usually are pretty well dressed, therefore they're they can spend the night out generally with what they have on them and, and uh, not freeze to death. And the right. cold's not that bad, uh, but they tend to not know where they are. They tend to walk over a ridge and then walk over another ridge and then maybe walk down a little valley. And now, you know, where am I? Uh, Let me ask you, so they can probably cover a lot of terrain in oh a yeah. short amount of time. And they're not, they're probably distracted because they're looking for animals and they're not really thinking about everything else. They're not focused on how to get back to camp. Uh, they're, <clears throat> if, they're, if it's done right, they go from point A to a road and follow the road back out. Most of them are stand hunters. They, they get to a point where they think the game's going to go by and they stand. Uh, and they hunt at dawn and dusk. Uh, the dawn hunters are good because then they have all day to be found, usually by their buddies. The dusk hunters? The dusk hunters, not quite so much. Uh, those calls usually start about 10 to 11 o'clock at night. <clears throat> we've, the last four we've done, have been, we've been involved in, have been in Garfield County. We never actually went out the door, but still six of us lose three or four hours sleep at from about one to four in the morning, getting things set up and then Garfield finds them. Which is good. I mean, that's that's much better. But it, you know, you you eat the time even if you don't turn the tires. So let me ask you. So Garfield County. So people know how is that? Where is that in relation to? It's the count, county. County to the west of us. Uh, okay. It includes the flat tops, which is basically from Colorado River Road on the uh, east-west axis to uh, one thir to uh, seventy on the north-south axis, uh, and. Unfortunately, the access to, call it to flat tops, which is all in Garfield County, is through Eagle County. Okay. So we're usually the ones that are better positioned to go look for them. Sometimes Garfield can get to them from their side. The last four, we spool up and uh, we're ready to go, and four or five guys lose sleep, and Garfield finds them, which is a good outcome. Because they do the same thing for us. We all help each other. We'll help right. Garfield on those. Uh, we're almost, let's see, it was November 11th last year, we pulled the two kids off of Holy Cross. Uh, and we had five teams from, uh, no, seven teams from five different counties, plus ours, plus, ours, plus the helicopters, plus the fixed wing. Um, and we were putting people all over Holy Cross, which was a lot of fun. And what's uh, a, like, to staff an event like that, if everybody had to go, oh. like how many people are, are pulled out initially? <sighs> well, the first night, I think we had four. Okay. Two on Holy Cross, two going up... Uh, uh, Cross Creek, which is normally where people are sta staff, plus three more back at base, running those four and taking a guess at a certain time. You got to start planning for tomorrow, right. and then you have to start putting phone calls out, arrange helicopters, things of that nature. Uh, the next day, probably 30 people, uh, not counting air crews. Add another 10 for the air crew, add another three for the sheriff's deputies, so 40, 45 people. Wow. And uh, we got the two kids, as, as you well know. We pulled them off. They just had very, very frozen feet, which they kept because they now use stroke okay. drugs to uh, handle frostbite, and okay. they work. Okay. Uh, and they, they, uh, we had a long chat with them uh, at, at their parents' request, actually, on you could have died at this. Let's not be quite so aggressive the <laughs> right. next time we do this. Right. So we, we okay. do that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. uh, but we're... Well, probably three weeks away from our first snow machine mission. That'd be about right. We get enough snow on the ground that it just barely covers all that timber that's down. And that's about the time somebody goes out there and hooks a ski, flips it over, it lands on top of them, they break something. That's right. So that mission will come up. Can I get you to hang out for another sure. interview? Sure, glad to. So we're going to give it to Ashley. She's got to look at that weather forecast. And then we're going to come back and find out more with Dan talking about moving into the winter, what you can expect. But Ashley has a look at that weather forecast next.